Scotland, you are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> It's our last day of our Robbie's tour around Lewis and Harris today. It's a little bit sad. It always goes so fast. On our first video, we covered across the first two days and we were trying to find some of the best things to do uh, in Lewis and Harris. One of those has to be the Callanish Stones, which is what we're going to today. But I'm not sure how well people know these stones. No, but they, I mean, looks wise, they look a lot like Stonehenge. They're stones arranged in a circle. But the difference with these a ones... A mysterious circle, isn't a it? A mysterious circle, but you can go up and touch them, unlike mm. um, Stonehenge, unless it's summer solstice or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's so much mystery. So we've got so many questions. We've got burning questions about the, these things. The biggest question though I, that I have with things like this and with these stones that I hope we pick up today is, why were they even why? built in the first place? Yeah. Also, how are they still standing? But that's probably more modern technology. I don't really know. But the fact that we get up actually can see yeah. I don't think there's going to be any trickery as such here, whereas Stonehenge was a bit like, you're so far away, you're just like, yeah. you're sort of looking at them, but today we get to go up so anyway, much closer. We better go get some coffee so that we can get our detective on. <laughs> That's true. We've been staying in this Airbnb, um, no, a B&B &B &B. in Stornoway. We have to go grab some breakfast. They are very religious here. So on a Sunday, you go to church. That is what you do. In Lewis, Nothing happens. Everything is closed. Even the Tesco is closed on a Sunday. Even the Tesco. Nothing is open. It's been so interesting driving around because we've been on the road for about 30 minutes and not one car except for the two that we saw there was not <laughs> not three cars so because of the religion thing they they literally just they do nothing on Sunday so the only cars that we've seen have been tourists and like camper vans and stuff but yeah Helen was saying that they don't even put washing out on a Sunday the mm. chain the um sorry the swing sets get chained up no playing no washing mm. nothing it's starting to change obviously with tourism on Sundays in particular but one of the things that I found quite funny was about the uh, ferry. <laughs> the ferry that we took here never used to operate on Sundays but now it does and there was um, when they first announced that they were going to do it the people started saying you know that they were going to protest and so everyone was a little bit worried and not, not sure what was going to happen and then basically the ferry just did its thing on a Sunday and there were no protests because it was a Sunday. They Everybody couldn't do was anything, still... <laughs> otherwise they'd be huge hypocrites. They were all at church. I love it. First stop for the day is called Dun Roch. <laughs> Gotta get the ch in there. <laughs> you can even put a little finger up over your shoulder as well, it's there. Is it over here? Bam, you nailed it, yeah. <laughs> it's a circular, well you can see it's a circular stone building that has two walls, the inside wall and an outside wall, and in between them is a staircase, which I think we can go up. I think so. This is actually only a third of a broch because it got destroyed in a fire. But these are native to Scotland and it's essentially a fort, right? It's pretty much a fort. They don't really know the exact reason why they were built, but um, they are thought to have been built because of like defence purposes. So we'll see. The epic thing about forts and stuff like this is Generally, when anything's built for defense purposes or in terms of vantage points, it always means that when we actually get to go and see them and scope them out, that there's always a good view. This is sitting, wow, well, this is actually a great spot. You can see, wait, which way's Lewis and which way's Harris again, babe? I keep forgetting. Lewis is the north. Lewis is the north. So we're essentially in Lewis at the moment. Harris is what we showed on day two, which was all of the mountains and everything. We can see them all lining over the back here. It's just an absolutely beautiful viewpoint. Should we just take a moment to figure out why these sheep have like... Oh, he's looking at me, not as I'm talking about He knows you're talking it. shit about They've them. got half a, um, half a coat. Yeah. They've definitely not been shorn by farmers. Because why would they only take half their... I don't know. I've got so many questions. So many why are the stones standing? Why do the sheep not have <laughs> any fluff? And how do we say brock? And how do I say brock? <laughs> I've got to duck down to get through here. Whoa. Can you stand up? Yeah, well, once you get to this point, and then you go. Oh, oh shit, I walked into the wall. Go oh. up that way. Oh. 
down the stairs. Oh, there's some bunny. <laughs> oh, they are. Oh, you can actually see in between the, um, in the cracks here. Oh, wow. Look, it's 2,000 year old staircase. <laughs> There are 13 stones in a circle, and then in total, there's 50 stones. And in the middle, they found a burial chamber, somewhere for the dead, the bodies and more. And the great thing about these stones is they are Lewisian nice. So this is the oldest rock in the world. You can touch the oldest rock in the world. We've arrived at the Callanish Stones and just a quick correction from what I said earlier. I did say that they were in a circle like Stonehenge, but in fact they're oh, yeah. in a um, they're in more of a cross and then there is a circle at the end. But so it's not we'll believed show... to be religious in no, that sense. No. So the stones are actually this is this was crazy. This I did not know this. They're five thousand years old, older than the pyramids well older than Stonehenge and they're made out of literally the oldest rock in the world. Anything else to share? It's saying here that the stones are probably moved with rollers and wooden frames but apparently the BBC came here two years ago and they did their own sort of investigation and they laid down a whole bunch of seaweed and then pushed rocks along them because obviously it's quite like slippery oh, yeah. and they're thinking that that's how they got moved and that's also why these are located close to the sea because they probably used seaweed. I think the thing that's blowing me away is that they're so old and so significant yet there's barely anybody here and you can just touch them. Outside the fact that the stones are amazing and have all this mystery behind it, just the setting of this as well is so unique with the, with the lock, we've got a lock over there, we've got a lock down here, we've got the Scottish houses and everything, all of the rolling mountains, we've finally got some sun. Well, in fact, every morning now that I think about it, every morning has been a little bit overcast and a little bit iffy and then the sun's come out and the afternoons have been amazing. We've come inside the circle. This is the circle that I mentioned earlier. And it's also thought that this, this was a burial ground. And that's what was similar to Stonehenge. So this is the largest one and it's right in the centre. That's huge. Crazy. Uh, what happened to your friend? Got ditched. <laughs> I love beagles, they're so cute. Should we maybe talk about the theories though? Yeah. The big question of the day. But why? But why? And there are so many theories. So even the official sign at the start there where you could read the intro said it's still very much a mystery. We've heard everything from astronomy. Um, uh, someone said that maybe they got put in a circle so they could put a rope around them and hang out their washing. Well obviously the burial ground so that's the significant people so the, the stones were set up to be visible and like a, a point of recognition. Another theory was that maybe it was a way to have the community work together on something and it was more about the mission of working together mm. and like working towards a common goal than it was about you know plop in a few stones in a yeah. circle. There's another another spot in Scotland somewhere where there are stones similar to this and each of the stones is from a different location which made sense for that yeah. but apparently these aren't. These are all of the same the same old rock, yeah. oldest rock. I think the last theory we heard was all, was um, maybe it was a meeting place, maybe it was like mm. a town hall or something where people would come and have uh, yeah. town meetings, town, whatever they did. But then meetings. I said, well, then why is there people buried in the in the middle? Maybe the, they're the people that used to take the meetings. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't really make sense. We've made it to what is probably going to be our last stop for the day, I think, you reckon? Yeah, so sad. It's because we're heading back on the ferry 
today heading back over to Inverness and everything we sort of showed that in the first video a little bit so we won't really go into it but this is called Uig Beach Uig Uig um, U-I-G Uig and which that's actually a nickname for it that, but sort of which just means bay apparently in Gaelic which we haven't really talked much about have we no can you remember the numbers how many people live here and how many speak it no. Test of your knowledge. 20,000 20, people live <laughs> yeah, in both Lewis and Harris. Exactly, and it was 90% speak Gaelic. And apparently it's making a bit of a uh, bit of a comeback. It's they've got schools now that focus all around Gaelic as sort of one of the um, as the primary language as well. So it's cool. They're going through like a. I think that this rebirth. is the first time in 400 years that there has been an increase in the number of people that speak Gaelic. See, you That's do? So cool. I knew you remembered this stuff. Yeah, it just came back to me. It sticks with you. Anyway, we're just walking around a path now through some um, camper van sort of area. We can walk down to the beach, but but we sort of walked down to the beach the other day and when we were in Luskan Tire and went down onto the sand and everything. So we're heading up towards a lookout point that apparently is going to give us the best view looking back over the whole thing because the sand looked... <laughs> Very nice. How are you doing? I'm doing this on deck. That's how you get up a hill. I'll just run it. But see now when you stop you feel tired. Gotta keep going. Wow. Scotland, you are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh. Oh. The views though. If, if it's not clear by now, we've been absolutely blown away. Which is with pretty, this country. Like, pretty impressive considering we come from New Zealand mm. and we're pretty spoilt with some of the scenery there. We definitely are. So this is, this is amazing. Maybe we should show you. I'll actually show you what it looks like. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> The crystal clear water show up on the camera? I don't think it does, not as much as what it is. It is, you can see the rocks and the sand on the bottom from yeah. up here. I'm kind of tempted to go down, but also I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should wrap this up and actually just appreciate this last moment, this last beach for us. This might be the end of our rabies trip, but it's not the end of our time in Scotland, thankfully. We've got a few more exciting places that we are going to go and check out. Some surprises. Yes. So check back in a couple days. Two days time. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>